What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Punch Club. It's time for us to hang out. It's weird that no part of the game takes place around the lake. You ever think about that? And why are the rest of these buildings all grayed out? Was it flattened by some kind of nuclear war or like some kind of ridiculous post-apocalyptic holocaust? Like the only things left standing are the buildings that specifically only apply to boxing and fighting. Everything else was just leveled. If you are not a boxer, you will die. There's nothing in Chinatown, by the way. Somebody asked me what's in Chinatown. Nothing. There's just this old guy over here, and when you talk to him, he can heal your injuries. If you get your ass kicked in one of the underground fights, he heals your injuries for an absurd, like, an absurd amount of money that you're not going to have at that point in the game. He's kind of a pointless NPC. I actually think they should make it so he can cure your injuries like once every 30 days or something like that for free. Maybe in exchange for some kind of like skill test or something like that. I've never used him. I've never seen anybody use him before. It's just not something you spend money on when the point in the game where he is useful, he's too expensive for. And once you're at the point where you don't get injured anymore, you never use him anyways. He is a, I guess he's a storyline character. You use him for if you're going to be a criminal and you're going to go to jail and do all that kind of stuff. I guess. Let's buy Adrian some presents. We're going to start this relationship off right by making up for attention by giving her loads and loads of objects and just hoping that she doesn't notice how much we're not around. If it works out, I think we'll be all right. Can we fall in love yet? Maybe we can fall in love. Nope, we can't fall in love. You know, I remember that song being a lot better than it actually was. I went back and listened to that the other day, that Brandy song that she came out with like a couple years back. And I remember hearing it on the radio and being like, that's not too bad. The beat goes. It's got kind of like a DJ Mustard thing going on. Because that was like right at the front end of the period where everybody was still, you know, dick riding DJ Mustard hella hard. People still ride him, but I think it's become like the standard now. I've noticed that DJs, they go through that where they'll be hella popular. Like Khaled was hella popular for about like five minutes. And then all of a sudden he was just gone afterwards. Like, before him, there was, like, DJ Shadow, and then he was gone, like, after his five minutes of fame. It seems to me like DJs are around for, like, two years, and everybody wants to, like, spit fire on one of their beats. And then they disappear, like, a week later. And you're like, whatever happened to that guy that made beats back in, like, 2008? You're like, oh, he's still... He's still making beats. He's just not popular anymore. My personal favorite was always DJ Who Kid. DJ Who Kid was dope. That's one of the reasons I'm not even that big of a 50 Cent fan. I just like the beats that he wrote for 50 Cent. I mean, I think I like DJ Who Kid's beats better than I like 50 Cent. DJ Who Kid made some dope-ass beats. They went. They went for days. Although he did have the habit of announcing himself on every track. He said, why is everybody such an attention whore nowadays, said the guy on the internet that needs people's validations for thumbs. I... <laughs> I'm self-aware. I'm self-aware. I think of these things sometimes while I'm saying other things. And I'm like, well, shit. I just undermined my entire point, didn't I? And I could point it out now, or I can wait for some guy that thinks he's a smartass in the comments to point it out. And I'll be like, yeah, I already thought that. But if you have to tell them that you already thought that beforehand, they're like, no, you didn't. Nope, you're just trying to make it sound like you... You're just trying to make it sound smart now. Nope, you didn't think of it. So I've decided I'm just going to undercut myself at every, interse at every intersection that I can. We're going to run a red light. We're going to run a red light. Not in reality. That's what dicks do. Although I do accelerate when I see yellow. I'm that guy. I'm like, nah, yellow means go faster. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it through this light. I'm gonna make it through this light. My girlfriend slams on. She sees yellow from, like, right... She'll be perfectly fine. Like, it'll turn yellow right when she's about to cross the crosswalk. And she, like, stands on the brake. She's like, no, cannot break laws. Like, God. I gotta go to a chiropractor. <laughs> you know you're still alive to drive through on yellows, right? Good God. I don't think we did very good with agility today. I think our agility may have reached a point of no more gainses with a capital. Well, we're doing okay. We did 400. That's not so terrible. We'll probably do bad today, but I need to go do another fight. Don't we have... I think we have shit to do today. I think we have shit to do, assuming that our fiber levels are at the appropriate spot. Yeah, when I see yellow, I've got a pretty good sixth sense for whether or not I'm going to make it. And so I usually just go for it. I'm like, ah, it's fine. We'll be good. As long as it's not like red when you cross the crosswalk, you're fine. Like, as long as I'm at the crosswalk or like a little bit before when it goes yellow, I'm good to go. Let's do this thing. I am unafraid. Let us ride our great steel chariot to Valhalla. Witness me! They arrested everybody in my neighborhood like four days ago. That was pretty cool. I don't know. It was entertainment that you didn't have to pay for. It's pretty awesome. Police came in with like 20 cop cars and just like started raiding houses. I have no idea. I was talking to one of my neighbors about it and apparently they got a warrant for like half the people in the apartment block because they had like 10 people on the curb handcuffed. 
They were just going like door to door and be like, yes, sir, you're coming with me, you're coming with me, you're coming with me. It's kind of crazy. Never seen that happen before. I didn't know they could do that. That might have been like the most active I've ever seen them. I don't know what the people were doing. Uh, they seem to be of varying ages between like 15 and 31. The police posted to their Facebook that it was for gang activity or something. But you can never tell with those things whether or not they're like, I don't know, telling the truth or whether they're just kind of like sugarcoating it. Like, gang activity is kind of a blanket term. Like, gang activity could be like accidentally wearing the same color with all your friends when you go out to the club or something. I don't know. I don't question it. Either way, they arrested like everybody in my neighborhood. It was, good, well, it was a good way to kill an hour and a half, just kind of watching all the cop cars and stuff. Gotta get entertainment how you can around here. No good movies out right now. Don't really feel like spending money on them anyways. I kind of need to go see The Revenant, but I got burned on... I got burned on Hateful Eight, and so... I did not enjoy Hateful Eight. That was a boring movie. That was a really boring movie. It just felt like it took them three hours to tell a story they could have told in an hour and 20 minutes. I'd be like, man, you could have condensed that so much better. Like, there were so many shots in that movie that were totally unnecessary. But he's like, but I'm using Ultra Panavision! Like, that doesn't mean anything to, like, 99.999999% of human beings, man. I'm glad it made you happy, and you've got the money to make yourself happy like that, but... Most of us don't even know what the shit Ultra Panavision is. Nor could we distinguish it between anything else. I know it's like a different type of film, but eh. Like a different type of camera or something, but this... This is not a conundrum that has affected my life at all up until this point. Like, I liked the movie. Like, I think if you took out all the useless scenes that were pointless, and then you put it back together as like an hour and 25 movie, I would have loved it. But the pacing just felt really bad, and some of the shots were weird too. Like, there was a couple scenes where the music was really overbearing and, like, really, really loud. And you're like, oh, something's gonna happen. Like, this music's all creepy and foreboding and hardcore. And then, like, nothing would happen. You'd be like, oh, okay, well, I felt like something was gonna happen in this scene and then nothing happened. Thanks for leading me on for 11 minutes, I guess. So we'll just offset that tension for later. I did feel tense the whole movie until they ruined I didn't like the twist. The twist, eh, didn't do anything for me. I don't know. All in all, I think it was one of his worst movies. By far, by a long margin, in fact, I'm hard-pressed to find a movie of his that I like worse than Hateful Eight. And it's odd, because it was still a good movie. Like, I'd still, I, I don't regret paying $10 for it or whatever, but it was definitely a waste of three hours. Way too long-winded for a movie that big. Still, your average Tarantino movie is better than a good movie from most other directors, so you accept it for what it is, I guess. I think I just got used to maybe the pacing that he kept when it came to like Django Unchained and Inglorious Bastards and Kill Bill. I think maybe I've just gotten used to the movies being go, 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 go all the time where he tends to be a filmmaker who moves very, very quickly. And it was weird seeing him slow down with Hateful Eight because it felt like the dialogue felt like a Tarantino movie and that Coggins guy is hilarious. That Coggins guy should be in everything. His delivery was like dead on the entire time. He plays the redneck idiot pretty fantastically. He also plays, he plays Laffer in American Ultra, if I remember right. What do I want to do with this guy? Oh yeah, we gotta fight this guy this way. What? I think as long as you don't spend any of your fame, it doesn't take that long to get to the end of the game. I think part of the problem is that you and I are breaking this up into like episodes that just aren't really accomplishing anything. Because you gotta farm fame for so long. You gotta farm fame for like a decade for each title fight. At a certain point, I don't know. I feel like it's a shitty... I, I can't say that I didn't like Hateful Eight. It just took too long to get to the point. I think that's really what it comes down to. I was like, I already know exactly what's gonna happen with this film. Like, I can tell you... Like, 90% of what's going to happen in this film by half of the way through. So if we could just speed it along and we could get back to the witty dialogue, I think we'd be alright. It was okay. I know people are going to disagree. That's fine. You can disagree with me. I'm not going to hurt my feelings at all. This is the internet. People shout at me all day, every day for a living. That's my job, is to have people insult me on the internet every day, so... Your skin gets a little thicker after a while. Sure, let's take Controlled Fury. Why not? It's not going to help our game out at all, but... We don't really need the extra agility slot either. That's the funny part is our character's already not using abilities when we want him to use them because he's got too many things queued up. You know, 40 fame a day, that means in three days by the time our next fight queues up, we, sh we should be able to go after Ryo. Let's 
go to the gym very quickly. We'll fill up on energy drinks. And from there, I do feel, you see what I mean though, I warned you guys that the game was going to get grindy here in the end. I said that in the first episode, did I not? Mm-hmm. First episode, I told you what was coming. I've been this far enough in the game enough times now to know that the end game is gnarly in this game. It's like they ran out of ideas or something. I actually would have rather had twice as many title fights and have them come twice as fast, because then it would at least feel like there weren't these giant gaps in the pacing of the game where you're farming fame or whatever it is. I think that might have been a safer choice where maybe you had to defeat like the top 10 or something like that instead of the top 5. And then the fights had half as much fame as a requirement or something like that. It would feel spaced a little bit better out. And by winning the previous fight, you would get like an escrow payment of fame that would start filling the bar up for the next fight. As of right now, all that remains is the bleed over that you haven't spent from previous. I do think they need to buff all of the fame accruing abilities. The cash accruing abilities seem to be about on par. But fame needs to get to the point where fully upgraded, it should do like 150, 200 a day or something. Just so if you want to mash out the game, you can. Because with this game, there are definitely those moments where you're like, I just kind of want to finish. Can we do that? I'm at that point right now. I think we probably have about four episodes left. If I had to put my life on it, I'd say four episodes would be what I would bet on. Because Ryo and Kine are going to kind of fall into place pretty quickly. I think we've got a little bit of farming left to do. I mean, in today's session, so I recorded six episodes today. We did Bruce Lee, we did Colt Kogan, and we're basically all the way there with Kine. If we get Kine today, it might take us three episodes to get to the end of the game before we farm out enough for any of the other stuff. But things aren't going so poorly. Like, I know it feels like it takes forever. But I think if you were just sitting around watching a movie playing this game, and I actually think that's the sort of game that this is. This is the kind of game where you put Netflix on your second monitor and then you turn off all the sound and you just sit here and play it. It's kind of like Cookie Clicker in that regard, where you keep wanting to play it and it's fun, but it's really, really grindy and you have no idea why you keep going. Cookie Clicker ate up a big portion of my life. I like clicker games. I have a problem with clicker games. And I don't know why either, because objectively they are bad video games. Like, you don't do anything. Everything is passive in those games, and yet... I sit there and I play them obsessively. Every time a new one comes out, I'm just like, ah, I'm clicking. Things are happening. I like it when things happen. Sure, I haven't been unhappy in a while. Let's make myself unhappy for a second. I guess caviar makes you unhappy. Who knew? It's the only thing in the fridge, so I'm going all in on it. Whatever. Whatevs, G. So when is Kind going to be available? Three days? Ugh. Okay. We basically have all the abilities we need in order to seal the deal on this right now. Was I Wing Chunning? What was I doing before this? Oh, the Wing Chun's almost out. Okay. That means we're probably back to speed bagging. That would be so annoying if you were upstairs while somebody was on a speed bag. Should have tried me crazy. The tattoo parlor I go to is built on top of a boxing gym. And they have like a missing partition wall on one side because it's like a industrial warehouse that got converted. Somebody bought it. And they converted it into commercial spacing for like seven different businesses that now pay rent. That's a pretty good money-making scheme right there, actually. When I, when, I, when I sat down and I really, in my head, ran the numbers on what they had done, I was like, damn, that's how you get rich right there. That's how you get rich right there. That's not bad, business owner. Not bad, building owner. That's not bad. Took a warehouse, chopped out all the walls, repartitioned it into like, I think, eight commercial properties, and now he rents them all. And the guy that runs my tattoo parlor said his rent's ridiculous. So I assume he's got to be pulling down. I don't know what the mortgage would be on a big-ass place like that that you got to pay on it. I don't even know what a place like that would go for. Probably like $1.52 million maybe. Which would mean the mortgage would probably be pretty gnarly. Like six, dollars $7,000 a month. $8,000 a month. But if you got seven businesses and they're all paying like standard California apartment costs. And I know commercial properties probably charge more than apartments. Commercial properties, let's say each person's paying 2000 a month. Which would be pretty easy to recoup as an average business. Shouldn't be too difficult anyways. That means you've got 14000 a month coming in and the rest is just like profit that you can put into something else. Not a bad plan. I might be running the numbers a little bit liberally, but... I know what rents are in California for like your average living situation. I know commercial properties cost way more. So... I think the biggest, like, bar like the biggest barrier to entry would probably be the down payment on the warehouse. That's the biggest, although that seems to be the biggest issue with house renting or ho owning a house in general. The down payment seems to be the barrier to entry for most people just because who has like 25 grand that they can just drop on something, you know? Like at the top of a hat, be like, 25k in cash, let's do this thing. 
Like, I don't know anybody that has that kind of money. So, the mortgages are not actually that terrible. Like, around here, mortgages on houses, if you've got okay credit, are like six fifty a month, which is, like, incredible, considering most apartments are about 1500 a month for two bedrooms. So... By comparison, you kind of want to be in a house if you live out here because you'll save yourself a lot of money in the long term. It's just that down payment that you got to throw down in there that I think stalls a lot of people. Even with two incomes, it can be hard to get that money together if you got like student loans and a bunch of other shit jamming you up. Especially since most people that I know are running their student loans hella hard right now. Like I do the same thing where I'm like grinding on my student loans as hard as I can right now putting like a lot into it trying to get rid of it because that thing accrues interest at a terrifying rate hey, it seems somewhat criminal that you can saddle with people with debt like that at such a terrible horrible like 20% interest rate it seems kind of bullshit to me and it's regardless of your credit too you can have like an 850 credit score it doesn't matter when you get financial aid they still strap like a 16% whatever ridiculous interest rate on it you can be 40 years old with like an established lifetime of credit and they're still gonna destroy you on that shit I don't know, it's a racket. It is a definite racket. And the problem is, like, all the politicians are in on it, taking cutbacks and shit from it, and kickbacks. And so it's a system that is not likely to change anytime soon. It's a little upsetting when you think about it. It's not something that I would ever want my kids to have to deal with. Like, just me personally, I'd rather just pay higher taxes and then just have, like, free healthcare and free colleges and be like, eh, all good, we can make cuts elsewhere. Legalize drugs. BAM! Now regulate them and sell them only from designated places with a license. BAM! Profit! You now have a shit ton of tax money to spend on all kinds of other stuff that I know you're not going to spend it on. You'll probably spend it on weird infrastructure projects and weird statues and shit like that to... to coax people into adding their businesses to the state, but whatever. We can be idealists sometimes without losing the faith, can't we? It's hard to keep the faith, though. Once you start, like, looking at the way the strings are pulled and shit, and you start, like, realizing that everything's interconnected and, like, everything functions the way it does because somebody has their finger in the pie and is profiting from it. It's a depressing feeling. It doesn't feel good that day where you have that realization where you just sit there Googling companies all day and, like, connecting threads and just being like, oh, my God, they own, like, everything. <laughs> they own, like, they own politicians. They own pretty much every part of, they have a monopoly. The problem is they make so much money that they can hire enough lawyers to where they can convince everybody on the planet that they don't have a monopoly while having a monopoly. It's a little terrifying, right? I just stopped looking. Just stopped investigating and stopped looking. Looking under the bed and knowing what's under there is not going to make it any better, I don't think. I used to think that looking at it real hard and like staring at it under the bed would make it better. Like shining a flashlight or something. I don't think it will though. I think that, like, the powers that be are so well invested and so well, just, like, solidified and dug in that I don't know if there's anything that can be done about it anymore. Voting doesn't matter. I mean, because they've got lobbyists that can buy out advertising space on every major network and convince all the idiots that's against their, that it's against their best interest, even when it's in their best interest to do a certain thing. You see it campaign season after campaign season. Where, like, they'll just be running ads, convincing people to vote against their own best interests and shit like that. And it's amazing, because it works. It works like a charm. It shouldn't, but it does. I think it's just because most people are too tired from working all day every day. To, like, sit down and do the Google food or realize that shit's bullshit. And that, like, you're being spoon-fed bullshit all day long every day from all the networks and whatnot. Like, I'm afforded a pretty reasonable amount of, amount of leisure time due to what I do for a living. And so that allows me... The opportunity to read a lot on the internet at sources that are not run by CNN or are not run by Fox or are not run by any of the mega conglomerates that essentially have their finger on the button of public policy. Finger on the trigger anyways. But most people it's just like you get home and you're so exhausted from working you have time to investigate anything. It's just like, mm. Like I know that I probably should but I worked 60 hours this week and I'm still barely making it so I'm just gonna go roll into bed and forget to vote, you know what I mean? I don't know. Like I said, I try not to think about it. Because uh, you see what happened right there? It sucked the oxygen out of the room. Every time. That's why I just don't think about it anymore. Every single time you bring it up, then it always starts an argument. And I'm like, well, the point's not to start an argument. I mean, that wasn't the point. The point, more or less, was just to say that there's a system designed in a way that is pretty messed up. 
and none of us seem to have any ideas about how to stop it from being the way that it is. I mean, aside from all out, just like burn it all down and start over. I don't know if I want to be alive during a tumultuous period like that. <laughs> like, it's all well and good to read about time periods like that in history books, like the French Revolution and whatnot. But I don't know if you want to live through it. You kind of just want to, like, benefit from the fact that other people live from it and make it last as long as possible, that foundation that they laid down. We got a 23 right now. What were his stats? 19 agility? This is a doable fight. I think we could outlast him. We'd have to play him like we play anybody else, but I think he's got... pretty bad abilities, all things considered, for fighting us. On paper, we should win this pretty resoundingly. But it's going to be a slugfest, I think, so be ready for that. Is he running anything? He's kind of built to fight characters that are stamina built. Let's just go with our basic agility counter for right now. Just reflect as much damage as we can and hope that we can deal out some hits before things get any gnarlier. He's going to be reflecting as well, but he's got the reflect that's for strong characters, not for agility characters. Whereas we're running the reflect that's for agility characters, which means we should be able to pull ahead pretty early. But essentially, we're the same build as him, we just have a smarter moves list. Ken is my favorite character from Street Fighter, by the way. Ken Masters is the shit. Like, I know Ryu gets a lot of the attention, but I am all about Ken Masters when it comes to the original fighters. Ken Masters is the... He's my jam. I gotta. I like. I like Street Fighter Alpha Ken though, when he had the hella long hair, and when you did like the Dragon Punch, the fire would wrap around his hair and would like go around. His hair was so dope in that game. And ever since then, they've given him like a weird bowl cut. I'm not feeling it. I think it's because they're trying to drum up nostalgia. Because he used to have that haircut back in the Street Fighter two and three days. But I always like Street Fighter Alpha Ken better, where he got the long ass hair. Supposedly, he's super famous in the storyline. I think he's like a movie star or something like that. I don't know. I haven't watched the animes in a long ass time. I have them. I think I have all the Street Fighter animes. There we go. We took out Kine. We're making progress. We're getting there. We're not quite there yet. We've almost got 10 grand. Jesus. Can you imagine stepping in the ring for like two rounds and just knocking somebody out and making like 10 grand? We only made like 5,000 right there, but my point still stands. Five grand for like nine minutes in a ring. Actually, how long is a boxing match? I don't know, 10 minutes? I don't watch boxing. UFC, it's usually like 3 minutes, right? As a round, or 3 or 4 minutes in there? I don't really follow UFC either, so you'll have to forgive me. I think we may just party until we get to Kine, because we should be able to go through Kine pretty easily. That being said, we're out of time for the day. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me for this period. I realize it's not the most entertaining. It is definitely grindy, but I like this game so much that I want to finish it. Like, everything up until this part of the game is so good. And then once you get to this part, the game's wheels just really fall off. I'll see y'all next time. Hi, do everybody.